in setup you create you put like uh, five ten cameras in one one parking lot to monitor you know the whole entire area one PTC you can you know you can cover the whole area so and also it comes the PTC also features the uh, patrol uh, pattern things like uh, option like this so you could utilize the camera as like uh, actual security guard so it will save money for your client as well and with all those uh, features combined you know uh, the most important is you know you have less installation labor and also you use this, you use less material and you know you know like labor always costs a lot of money in the United States so in that case you know you save your time and you could you know move on to the next project faster and now I'm going to show you a video of how our PC camera will operate The big picture. Security dealers and integrators are trained to find the best solutions for security installations. Projects that often cover high traffic and large areas may consider selecting pan, tilt, zoom, or PTZ high-speed domes. LTS features a wide range of PTZ high-speed domes for analog, IP, and TVI products. Experience the big picture. There are many advantages for choosing a LTS high-speed dome. The versatility allows PTZs to be used in wide operating temperatures, both indoor and outdoor. The mobility makes them suitable for airports, stations, cities, and more. LTS high-speed domes possess amazing zoom function with powerful optical zoom from 20 to 37 times magnification that helps provide greater detail for collecting data or evidence. You have the ability to control PTZ from just about anywhere. From a control station, remote access through your mobile devices, joystick or keyboard, or from the DVR and VR directly. Control what you see by panning, tilting, zooming, with multiple input options like rotation, presets, patrol, and smart tracking. PTZ moves quick and precise when smart tracking is turned on. The PTZ will tour and lock on moving objects to track across the area under surveillance. LTS makes installations easy. After you mount the camera, simply plug in the cables, the power, and your PTZ will automatically boot up for use. For a security camera with great versatility, choose LTS PTZ High Speed Domes. For more information, call your sales representative today. Okay, now um, the uh, the demo I'll be, I'll be um, using to demonstrate the, the features of our PTZ is the um, it will be the uh, PTZ IP762 X20IR. This is the uh, 2 megapixel, 30 frame per second, 20 times object to zoom with 14 IRs. I don't know why it's keep going backwards, sorry about that. And then it will support micro SD card to 64 gigs. So let's show you. Um, when you lock into the camera, okay, you will have option call configuration on the right top. Okay, once you go there, you go to uh, advanced configuration and then you choose PTZ. So as you can see here, this is the PTZ configuration screen. So um, I will go over the, uh, the f you know, the, what, they, what they mean. So first, the, uh, it's called uh, proportional pan. You know, when you zoom a camera into, like, for example, 20 times, and you try to pan the camera for, like, a, um, you know, to a different area, the, uh, the panning will be so much quicker but like when you have uh, the proportional pen enabled, the camera basically will not you know go so quickly. It will uh, we adjust according to how far you zoom in. So it's a very good feature. But this feature is always enabled. The next one is presets freezing, um, meaning this one uh, when you jump from preset to presets, it will uh, it will go very quickly. You don't. You won't have to. Um, 
wait till the camera, you know, the, the, basically the camera zooming, the, the panning speed will not kick in. It will just basically zoom one preset to another preset very quickly. Uh, this feature is disabled by default. The preset speeds, you can adjust it from 1 to 8. The keyboard control, you have three speed uh, uh, settings. The auto scan speed, you have, right, you have different settings as well, from 1 to 40. The zooming speed, you have 1 to 3. PTC OSD stands for on-screen display. It will display the uh, zoom status once you try to zoom in, but you can also change it from 2 to 5 seconds and then 10 seconds. You can always leave it open and always close. Same thing to the pen 2 status and the preset status. Power off memories. Set resume time point. This meaning uh, how long would it take for the camera to go back to the, uh, the previous state. For example, the camera was set to a patrol. If you power recycle the camera, how long would it take for it to go back to the previous state? Limit. Uh, this is a very cool feature. So, you know, as you most of the installation of a PTC camera, you probably going to be mounting um, at the corner of the building, so you don't need to basically see what is behind the camera, but in order, to, in order to avoid the camera going beyond that point, you can set the limit. So this is our conference room. I mounted basically at the corner of, the, uh, of our conference room. So as you can see, the camera basically can go 360, as I said before. 360, it might not be a very crucial uh, um, feature, but what happens if you don't have it? What happens if you, after you install the camera, you, you, you're probably mounting in like 20 feet high up, um, up in the uh, building? So when the 360 stock point is like, for example, right here, you have to go back after the camera and then reverse it again to, you know, to readjust it, which is pain in the neck when you, when you try to install the PTC camera. So like with the, our FTS 360 endless panting, you can limit, the, limit that um, inconvenience. Okay, let's go back to the limit. When you, uh, you could first, you can enable the uh, limit and then you can click on set. Once you click on set, it will, on screen it will show you, it tell you to set left limit. So like, we're going to move to the left. Um, I will say I want to see the whiteboard and I don't want to see anything beyond that. So I will click OK, which is the, uh, the iris plus, and then it will change to set right limit. So example, I don't want to see beyond this pole over here. So and then I'll click on save again. Now it's the uh, the up limit. For example, I don't want to see the fluorescent light fixture. So then I will leave it here. Same thing to the bottom, and um, I want to see all the way to the bottom. And then okay. So after I save all this, you see the status change is limited. When you go back to a live view. If I try to go up to the top, see the camera will not go up to where the fluorescent light was to be. If I pan to the left, the camera will basically stick to where the whiteboard is because it won't let you go beyond that. Same thing to the right, it will not able to go past the pole. Okay, this is uh, lim on the limit. It's very useful when you install a camera um, at the corner of the building or you just want to see certain view. Initial position. What this means is when the camera power recycle, it will go back to this particular spot. But uh, if you have a camera with smart tracking, it will basically go back to the, uh, it, the smart tracking will overwrite the initial position. Because uh, when you're using a smart tracking, you can set an uh, a area for the camera to be locked on for the smart tracking. So it will overtake the initial position. But in order to set that, you basically just have to move the camera to where you want and then click on set. And then you will see you see safe success. Park action. Before I move on to this, I want to show you how to set up the presets first. So on the PTC camera that you have multiple, you have like 256 presets you can set. So meaning that you have 200, uh, well, you have more than 200 preset you can uh, view a point of view that you can set. So for example, my first preset, I want to look at this door. So I will save this preset. And then the second preset, I want to look at, you know, the whiteboard. And then I'll just click on set. So by doing this, I could easily 
jump from preset to another preset very quickly. So now I'm going to break one more to look at the uh, upload for file over here. So let's set it. Now with the preset, uh, you know, with the uh, setup with the preset, now we could utilize the uh, we call it the uh, the patrol or uh, some people call it path or cruise. So in order to set it up, on the you can go go choose the uh, the patrol little icon here, and then you have options of eight patrol on this particular particular camera. So on the left lower corner here, you have a little positive uh, add button. You click, and then you could choose what preset to go with. So I said, for example, I want to start from three, and then I want the uh, the uh, how I want the camera to stay there for like three seconds. And then patrol speed, uh, meaning from one patrol, to one preset to another preset, and what kind, what type of speed it will, uh, it will move. So let's say I wanted to do maybe 15. Okay, so you have the first preset, and then you're gonna add the second preset point. For example, I want to go cam uh, preset one. I want to stay there for five seconds this time. I want it to move a little faster at 20 speed. And then now the preset two. I want this to stay there for like uh, five seconds again, and then at 20 speed. Once you add the preset, uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot reuse it. For example, you want to you want to jump back to like preset one after you go to the preset two. I can also re-add preset one back to it, but this time I want 10 speed and only three seconds. Once you finish, okay, you can you will click on save over here, and then you can click on the play button to preview it. So now the preset we will on the patrol will start working. So now we have preset one and then we'll go to preset two. And then it will go back to preset one after five seconds at ten speed. So basically this is to show you how the patrol will work. It's uh it's very easy, it's very uh simple and it's uh, straight very straightforward. So Nick the next one that I want to talk about is called pattern. Uh, in some situation, they call it track. Uh, when they say track, meaning like a train track, you record a train track for the camera to follow. So, so I'm going to demonstrate it now. Uh, first, you're going to move the camera to somewhere that you want to start the, uh, the pattern. So for example, I'm going to start here. I will select path one, and then I'll click on recording. So on the screen now, you will see program pattern, we remaining memory, you have total 100. So I'll stop moving the camera. It can always adjust the speed. If you say I don't want to move this fast, I want to go back slower. Okay. And I want to go down a little bit and then go to the right again. And then I want to go down a little bit more and then come back to the left. And once you finish, you want to click the save button. Okay. And then you can click on the play button to play to preview what you just did. So now you see the first it will just follow what we basically recorded it. You go back slow. And then you're gonna tilt out a little bit. And then go right again. So with our uh, pattern preset and patrol setup. Now I'm going to demonstrate how the park action works. Let's go back to configuration. Park action. Basically what this does is the camera um, when you have certain stuff enabled, for example when you have a patrol, when you have a pattern uh, in process, in progress, but what happens when you move the camera to, to like uh, another area? That you want to, you want to just want to want to sneak peek. So and then it will interrupt the uh, the pattern or the patrol that you currently set at. But with the park action, if you enable it, for example, I want the pattern that we just did, which is pattern one. I saved it. If I go back to live view right now, the camera will start moving, which is where the pattern that we saved earlier. Okay. But let's say, right now I want to interrupt the camera to look at something else. For example, I want to look at the floor. But because we set the park action to enable after 5 seconds, meaning after 5 seconds, if the camera is not active, 
it will go back to the parent just like what we did just now. And also, not just uh, patrol, you can also, I'm sorry, not just pattern, you can also set it up as a, uh, as, a, as, a, as a patrol. So once you save it, the camera now is using patrol instead of the, pat, uh, instead of the pattern. But let's say if I interrupt it right now, after a certain, after five seconds, the camera will go back to patrol mode. So the park action is actually very useful features. And also, we also have some presets, uh, a scan option. For example, auto scan, frame scan, random scan. The camera basically just randomly scans certain uh, the, from you know from the manufacturer's uh, st uh, settings, and also you can also choose the camera to stay at one preset. So if I use this, I want the camera to look at preset one, which is a door. So let's say if I interrupt it to look at the whiteboard, but if I don't move it for five seconds, the camera will basically go back to the preset one, which is looking at the door. So this is this camera is fully customizable for you to to match what your customer is looking for. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a break and see if you guys have any question regarding the uh, the park action, the limit, and the previous um, things that I just went through. Okay, Lenny has a question. What's a panoramic scan? So I will just show you what this basically does. It's just going to basically zoom in uh, panting like this. It's a, fa it's a factory settings that they do this random scan. So you see the camera is doing its own thing. Usually um, when you set up the PPC that you don't really utilize the, uh, the factory's uh, scan options because you could create your own settings. Okay. Any other question before I move on? Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about the uh, privacy masks. Privacy mask is, you know, all camera has it. So what's so special about it? Okay, so I'm going to use some real life example here. This is our PTC that camera that mount right above the uh, right off corner of our building. Okay, uh, Lenny had another question. Do these settings override smart tracking? Um, I will get to that in a little moment. Basically, a uh, you, uh, when you have smart tracking turned on, um, we have something called scheduled tests. So what it does is basically it will uh, operate in certain features in, within certain time. So for example, you want the camera to be running from like 10 to 7 in smart tracking, but at a certain point, you want the camera to be doing like a, a, a different thing. You can do that within the scheduled test, which is what I will go over later, later today. Okay. So let's go to configuration under this camera. Currently, it has the uh, smart checking enabled, so I'll disable that. Privacy mess. The reason why I want to talk about it here because this type, this uh, uh, privacy mess is very unique. So let's say, for example, we have a car over here that you know is basically our uh, you know CEO's car that he doesn't want to be showing his license plate on the PTC camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable PD, uh, the privacy mask. I'm going to draw this area over here, okay, and then I click on Add, and then I click Save. So you go back to the live view. The area basically is masked, but what happens if I move the camera? You basically see the mass follow the coordinate, not like traditional uh, privacy mask. This is what we call a 3D privacy mask. You see, when you can't, when the car is out of the, the camera sight, it just basically won't show that pad. Don't phone that sort of masking. And you can also always add more masks. And you even even choose what color you want the mask to be. You have this variety of color. Okay. So let's say I want to draw another area, which is I don't want to see, for example, I'm gonna to move to across the street. I don't want to see the building. 
Okay, I want to put them in like a. Oops. Let me stop the uh, park action. Nope, park action is not enabled. Okay, let's go back to the privacy mess. And I'm going to change it to like a red color. Okay, when I go back to live view, you see this is the the building is mess. But when I move it, what I just mess, it doesn't come up to on the other side. So this is why we why I want to go over with you guys. This 2D masking is is very useful. Very very cool features. Okay, and also you have an option to clear it all and when we set everything. You get option to delete it. Okay. And then save. And then it's all clean again. Before I jump into the uh, the schedule test, I want to go over with the uh, smart tracking first. Okay, uh, this is the smart tracking. The 762 and 752 will have this option. So when you use smart tracking, first you're going to go enable it. You're going to choose a preset where you want the camera to always stay at where you can choose the, uh, where do you stop the, the, the smart tracking. Um, okay, Jim has a question. Can you still record the mask area? It will be recorded from your MVR, but what happens is you're going to see a mask over it. It's meaning that uh, when we create, you're going to see uh, the building across the street from, from us. It will be a red uh, you know, spot over it. So that's why they they call it a privacy mask. So you can when you when you mask it, it will be also in the recording. Okay. Then you had another question. Can you use privacy mask with smart tracking to say, for example, not see moving tree that keeps tracking the camera? Uh, very good question, Lenny. In the near future, uh, our PTZ camera with the PT with the smart tracking uh, will implement these features. Uh, we are still working on it at this moment. Um, so which means when this when the smart tracking will not trigger by certain stuff, for example, if I look at this tree here, I want to I want to block this tree not to trigger the smart tracking. Yeah, it will be it, it will work that way. But uh, as is right now, um, we don't have that features yet, but it will be implemented in the near future. Okay, smart tracking. The duration meaning how long the uh, to stay with the object when the uh, when the smart tracking is triggered. So default is five uh, three hundred. I'm gonna change it to like five. I don't want to stay there for three hundred seconds. And then the presets. Um, I preset the. Uh, I already set up the preset ten to look at certain area. Okay. So this is the area that I want to use the smart tracking. Okay. And then I have. Um, I want the. Uh, if the uh, um, sorry, if the motion is not active anymore, five, after five seconds, it will go back to the preset ten. Okay, after I save it, so it will activate. The zoom sensor ratio is uh, when you an object comes by and you want to zoom in to see the object, you can use the zoom in ratio. So you just basically go to a a, a, zoom, to a level that you want to use. For example, you zoom in a little bit. Or you know, this too far. You know, just basically click on set zoom ratio, and you will see saves the seat. And basically, when the object comes by, it will basically zoom into the level that you you set it up at. So um, I'm gonna ask one of our colleagues see if you can step outside, so we can show you how the smart tracking works. So give me one second, please. Our colleague is walking out right now, so you can see the camera is not picking up the motion, and it will just follow him. You see how this is the uh, the smart tracking will work. We have more people coming out, so you can see you can find the following him go back to the office. And also, when the uh, smart tracking picks up the first object, uh, it will follow that object until it stops moving for like five seconds, and then it will either go go back to the preset or it will start following another second object like. 
the uh, the vehicle right now. So you now he's following in the car to our pickup uh, department. Sorry about that, because it's a little delayed, because it's, it's over the uh, internet when we try to see that camera over there. So now there's no out, no moving. They go back to the presets. So with the preset, uh, with the uh, the smart tracking enabled right now, I could go on and show you what the scheduled task is. Uh, but before I move on, do you guys have any more question regarding the uh, the privacy mask, park action, smart tracking, or the stuff that that we haven't got, uh, we haven't go through yet? Okay, I guess not. So that's that's good. Okay, so scheduled tasks. So when you enable this, and um, and also. Okay, we do have a question. Is there any way to not detect trees? Um, as is right now, not yet. But we will, as I said before, we could implement. We will implement uh, a masking for the tra smart tracking, so we could uh, remove some of the object that you don't want to track. Keep tracking the uh, the move. I mean, like for example, trees, flags, you know, or you know, any other stuff that's moving constantly moving outside near the camera. So we will implement that in the future, but as of right now, not yet. Okay, schedule test. Now with the uh, smart tracking enabled, meaning the uh, my smart tracking will be operating 24/7. But for example, at certain time, I don't want smart tracking. I want patrol. Like for example, after after hours, um, like after six o'clock, I want the the camera to go into a patrol mode. So first you're gonna set enable schedule tests. You're gonna need to go to edit tests. So you can customize it here. So right now the time is eleven forty six. So I want to change it to eleven fifty and then it ends at eleven 53. So basically I have three sec three total of three minutes of pattern one. Okay, and then I'm gonna select all and copy it to every day and then click OK and then save it. Okay, uh, Andy have a question. Will smart tracking motion exclude be a firmware upgrade or newer PCT only? Smart tracking is exclusive for seven sixty two and seven fifty two. And um we only uh, the new firm the new features that we talk, I talked about the smart tracking masking will be implemented by firmware upgrade. So meaning you don't have to buy a brand uh, a new camera in order to work. So uh, if you already have 762 and we implement the new firmware, it um, it basically will you just upgrade it and it will work. Okay, after I set it, now I'm at uh, 11:50. Uh, the camera will basically stop the smart tracking, which is about two minutes from now. And also another feature that we also uh, very uh, is very useful in real life uh, environment is, for example, uh, that's certain from certain time, that is the uh, loading truck always comes in at that time, and I want to look at the gate. For example, you have a gate you know, where the truck comes in, and I want to look at that, that truck. So basically, it will, you will create a preset at that location. So in that case, I will choose preset 3, which is our engines on the side. And I will choose uh, 1154. And then the truck comes in at 1154, and then approximately to maybe 1156, okay? So now, I'll same thing, copy all to all other day, and then click OK. So now, we're at 11.49. So once it goes 11.50, it will stop the smart tracking and start patrolling. So in the meantime, let me answer some questions. Can this camera zoom enough to recognize a license plate at night where it's pitch black, especially a new car that LED license plate light? Uh, Neil, that's a good question. Um, I haven't tried it. At, uh, at night with the newer uh, type of vehicle that has the uh, the IOD license plate, uh, but I don't think that would be a big interference because um, 
you know, most of a lot of cars they have the Z on headlight, and at night it just uh, the camera is detected as a regular light. Um, but to zoom into a license plate, depending on the vehicle angle, um, if the vehicle is looking, uh, you know, if the uh, the vehicle is not moving, I don't, I believe you can still able to see the license plate. But if the car vehicle is moving, there will be a different scenario, because um, if you can see, like when you go into a tow booth, they always have a camera. But the uh, you can see the ca the camera is always in like a a, a, f a very straight angle, not like extreme narrow angle, and to able to capture the license plate. So it will be same thing to apply to any kind of camera. So it really depends on how you set it up and how the environment is. So I mean, in a lot of things also come into play, and if it's such a you know such a, such a situation. So um, but like I would. Show you some night shot in you know in a, in a few minutes so you can see how it operates at night. Okay, as you can see, the camera is actually starting to pen, uh, pen you know, going through the uh, the uh, the pattern. So it will basically go uh, go on for like a few minutes. Okay, I'm gonna see if I could jump the test. So it will end at 7:53. So I'm gonna change it to like uh, 52. Okay, and this will be starting at 753, so you can save us some time. Same thing every time you make a um, changes, make sure you copy to other days on, in the week, and then save it. So now we have 30 seconds left on the patrol. So what the patrol is done at 11:53, was it 53 that we said it? 52, sorry about that. So as soon as you go to 11.52, it will go to preset 3, which is uh, the side entrance of our parking lot. There you go. So right now the preset is the, the patrol is stopped. So five seconds later, it will go into the uh, preset. The I said 53, right? I think I said it as 53. So right now it's, uh, so it this, this in between, this whole minute in between, it will basically go back to smart tracking. So like uh, with this one minute, it will become smart tracking right at this moment, which is because uh, we set it as preset 10, which is where the camera is right now. But as soon as you go to 53, see the car come by, it will start picking up the car. And then um, at 11.53, it will go to the preset 3. Um, Andy, you have a question regarding pattern and patrol. They, uh, they seem the same. How do they differ from one another? Um, that is, they are very similar. I will, I would say. So you see, what now is go to 11:53. It will go to preset three. Okay, so preset patrol. Uh, sorry, pattern and patrol. When you're saying a pattern, um, it will be a smooth. Uh, the camera will, move, will go smoothly because basically the uh, the camera will record where you want to move the camera. So like the transition of the camera will be very smoothly. Okay, but patrol, patrol is for example, I'll make some example. For example, you have like a multiple entrance or loading dock. You want the camera jump from point to point. The camera basically you can also choose how long the camera stay at this preset within the patrol mode. So we want this loading duck to stay at 10 seconds, the second one 8 seconds, and then the third one for 15 seconds. You can choose that. <clears throat> With the pattern, you can also do that. But the thing is, you have to record it yourself. So you have to move the camera to 1, and then sit there for 10 seconds, and you move the camera, you move the pre preset 2, and then let it sit there for like uh, 15 seconds or so. But with the preset, you can do that a lot quicker. So um, it is very similar. but uh, the way to manipulate it, it will be a lot easier because you know when you have preset already set up, you just jump point to point very quickly, and you can also choose how fast the camera jump from one preset to another. So in order to use that on in the pattern mode, you have to change the speed, you have to pause, change the speed, and then jump to the another uh, area. But you might actually go beyond the area that you, you want because you set the speed extremely high and then you have to go backward. So like uh, usually pattern is you create a very smooth uh, uh, area patrol but uh, the actual patrol meaning you can you can set a, a stop point a lot more um, efficient. Okay as you can see the camera is still staying at 
preset three because I believe we set it to eleven fifty six. Yep, we have set it to eleven fifty six. So as soon as eleven fifty six goes by and the camera will go back to smart tracking view. <clears throat> and um after the uh the schedule test, I want to show you uh, the quality of this 2 megapixel with 20 top to go zoom and how far you can see. And also I have a couple of more features I want to show you so um, to how to utilize the PTZ cam much more efficiently. Okay, so we have 10 seconds more before the, uh, the preset 3 will expire. So like now the preset 3 should be over. Now 5 seconds later, it will go back to the uh, smart tracking. Okay, so now this is a uh, two megapixel, twenty times optical zoom PTZ camera. So let me disable the uh, smart tracking. Okay, as you can see, we have a we have a postal service truck. Um, first, I'm going to go through with the duty zoom. What is a duty zoom? So, for example, I want to see this flag our United States flag. I have to move the camera to point at the center of the of the uh, screen before I actually can zoom in. Right? See now I'm out of range. Because you know sometimes it's hard to choose, sometimes sometimes it's hard to move, because especially when you try to transfer it over the internet because of delay delays. Okay. So now I'm get to the right direction, and then I can zoom in. Okay, but for example, if you have the three D zoom, you basically click on the three D zoom. You just circle it, draw a rectangle over it from left to right. The camera will just zoom in to that area because of the limit that we set it. To, that's why you couldn't go up any higher. So I'll use a different example. I want to see this truck why it's blocking the road, so I want to use 3D zoom and just draw this truck from left to right. And then the camera will just zoom in like this. Now if I have more stuff to see, I actually want to see this what this car is, and I could just basically zoom from left to right. Okay, so this 3D zoom feature is very useful. You try to track an object faster instead of you know traditional way go to the left go to the right make the object in the center and then zoom in which is a lot of time consuming in that case so but now your question is I don't want to zoom in but how do I zoom out so instead of you join from left to right you're gonna from draw from right to left okay and then you can zoom out right to left again and you can zoom out. I guess this, that's how the uh, zooming works. And to show you how powerful this 20 uh, time optical zoom with uh, 2 megapixel, I'm going to show you what uh, cost, uh, the bidding across the street from us, what they truly are. So with the 2D zoom on, I just simply draw this door. It will go straight right into it. And then again, now you can see they are Comcast. Basically, uh, I believe that we are about 200 to maybe 300 feet away from that building, so you can still make out uh, what the you know what the what they are. And also, you can even, for example, you see the license plate. You're still able to read what the license plate is with the 24 with the 20 times optical zoom. So this is a very powerful optical zoom. And also, we do have a highway you know, behind us somewhere. So you can also zoom in. Okay, went to the wrong spot, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, Neil has a question, very nice camera. Is there one of these for the PT, uh, HDTVI? Yes, we do. We also have very something similar for the for the uh, HDTVI too. Uh, but only difference is uh, it does not have the uh, the 3D zoom, the schedule test, smart tracking, things like that, but it will also always operate as the uh, a 1080p, uh, you know, depending on the model. Sometimes at 20, 20 um, PDZ camera. Okay, so you can see, um, 
you can basically still see the uh, how good the uh, the image is with this optical zoom. You can still you, know, you can still see what kind of car, as I and also like um, you know things like this. And um, and also new question was is any any uh, any one of these for the HD TV? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we have uh, something similar, but it just doesn't have the IP features. Um, the IP features uh, includes the, uh, the 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 spot tracking, of course, the schedule test, park action, things like that. Um, because an analog camera is not like an IP camera, like it has in the individual settings, so it will be a little different. But the quality wise is also very good. It's per is actually very similar. Okay, Michael have a question is um, can a firmware upgrade be done on the PTC camera through remote access? Correct. If the PTC camera, most of the time when you set up a PTC IP PTC camera, you will also do set up a forwarding on the PTC camera so you could utilize the settings from the side. So you can always remote uh, using uh, remote access to upgrade the firmware, just like the MVR or DVR. Is 3D zoom available on IP PTC camera? Yes, correct. Uh, all P IP PTC camera will have the 3D zoom option. But remember this: uh, the, I, the 3D zoom function is always able to uh, use it from the from the PTC camera. Let me go back to somewhere that I can probably read off some plates. You know, as you can see here, I'm gonna see if I could move to over here and then see if we could catch some of the detail of maybe the cars over there. So you can see with the 24, 24 uh, sorry, 20 times optical zoom, you can basically read off the play. So if the car is moving, it depends on how fast they are moving. Because this is why the uh, the tow booth, when they put up the camera, they always reduce, let you reduce the speed before you can, you know, before you they can reach play. Yep. Now, yes, they are. They're actually very good quality, and you know, a lot of customer they. Uh, you know, they always overlook the, the how uh, how powerful the twenty the optical zoom is because uh, I have a customer that they always want five megapixel PTC, but which is we don't have it. So like uh, we convince them to try our uh, two megapixel twenty times because they are looking to get those five megapixel PTC, which is only have like six times optical zoom. But like um, when we only have six times optical zoom, this is basically almost you know f uh, four times lower than our twenty times optical zoom. So even though with two, me two megapixel, you're still able to, to get the uh, the ex excellent image quality over the five megapixel. And majority, most of the computer screen right now, or the monitor, they will be looking at the video is only you know 1080p. So like, you can't even see the five megapixel quality. So you have to utilize the digital zoom. So when you have that kind of you know uh, when you set up like a particular you know PTC camera so why not go with the PTC with the high optical zoom so in that case you know you can utilize it even better so like um and the next thing is I want to talk about is the uh, kind of skipped over that is the uh, the prioritized PTC control so um, when you have a, a 752 762 with a smart tracking device, a smart tracking PDC, especially the uh, only on, this will only be available on the IP camera, so keep that in mind. Um, you have two. You do have a RS-45 connection from these two cameras. So let's say if two person try to control the camera at the same time, what's going to happen? So with this prioritize PTC function that you can prioritize, so if you have, if the, uh, you know, if the manager that likes to control the camera is using a network connection, and his staff it will be using like a security guard will be using a, a joystick. So you want the security guard, you know, to uh, have prioritized uh, uh, to use the, the, the PTC camera, so you will choose RS-45. So meaning, if two person uh, use a camera at the same time, the person who has prioritized will able to gain control. And if he doesn't move the camera for approximately five, 10 seconds later, the person uses the uh, computer over the network able to control the camera after 10 seconds. So this is one of the very convenience features you can set it up for your client too. Okay. So before I moved on, uh, before we, we uh, you know finish with the presentation today, and I would like to see if you guys have any more questions for me before, you know, before you guys take some time to take some survey. Uh, 
I think everyone is pretty good today. So, um, and uh, as you know, thank you for joining me today. And um, we do have a survey after the uh, the presentation. So I want you to, um, you know, I hope you guys can fill it out. And um, so please, you know, give us some uh, feedback and what we can do to improve your experience. You know, in any way, it will mean a lot to us. So, like, uh, thank you for joining me today. And um, and have you, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. LTS sales representatives can provide you the most professional industry and product knowledge that you need for your project. Call today.